Hi everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes. Let us start the session. Let us start the session. Just a minute. Okay. Okay. So let us start this uh, revision session and uh, let us try to integrate this revision session with the flashcard based approach. So let us, let us, let us, let us, let us start this. So these are the new upcoming batches you must be aware of, and there are a lot of offers going on. You can just avail them. Yes. So let us try. Let us start this session. So the first question, the first question that we discuss today is uh, okay. So one twenty-six year old, twenty-six year old smoker presents with the following de deformity or with the following defect in the emergency room. What is the most probable diagnosis? Yes. Okay. So tell me. Same to you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your wishes and God bless you all. Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. So if you see the classical profile, the classical profile of the patient is a 26 year old. That means young individual. Yes. Smoker. Presents with the following presentation. If you see this presentation, what is this? Yeah, there is there is wet gangrene also. There is a component which has been totally mummified and shriveled. There is a component which is about to get necrosis. So this is a patient with peripheral arterial disease. Basically, this is a patient with peripheral arterial disease and probably suggestive of Burgess disease. Or you can say thromboangitis obliterans. So yes, the diagnosis is absolutely clear. Thromboangitis obliterans, tau. Or you can say a Burgess disease. Burgess disease. Now let us talk about the workup. Workup of this patient. And let us talk about the management of this patient. So for that, let us, let me add one more slide to this. Okay. Okay. So when we talk about the Burgess, so if you see, if you see this important question, when we talk about the Burgess, what is the classical presentation of Burgess? This could be, this could be a peripheral arterial disease because maybe of atherosclerosis also. So why will you not say that this is atherosclerosis? Can you tell me why? Why? If you talk about Burgess, it is nothing but Burgess is defined as it's a non-atherosclerotic condition. Yes or no? So basically, it's a vasculitis. It is a vasculitis involving the small or the medium sized vessel. So involving the small or the medium sized vessels and nerves also. This is very, 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 very important. Along with that, what are very important things that you should be knowing? The first thing that you should be knowing is the age is a classical important hint. Age less than 45 degree. Uh, 45 degree I'm saying age less than 45 years here yeah. second is patient is a smoker so smoking is present age less than 45 to 50 what else no atherosclerosis no dyslipidemia so no atherosclerosis no dyslipidemia 
no diabetes mellitus these things are very 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 important because if they are present then the diagnosis of burgess become very difficult maybe involving maybe associated with superficial thrombophlebitis also so maybe associated with maybe associated with superficial superficial thrombophlebitis thrombophlebitis what else yes distal extremities involved first what is this criteria what is this criteria known as so distal extremities distal extremity involved first so distal extremities involved first smoker no atherosclerosis no dyslipidemia no diabetes mellitus may be associated with superficial thrombophlebitis and distal extremities involved first this criteria is a world famous criteria which is known as shianoyas criteria or the very same very similar looking criteria is a olin's criteria so shianoyas we have one criteria which is known as shianoyas and another criteria is a olin's criteria olin's criteria remember the first thing that is important is clinically try to establish the diagnosis of burgers because once the diagnosis of burgers is involved is made out then you become more clear in what is the what is the further line of work up students investigation of choice what is the investigation of choice come on answer me what is the what should be the investigation of choice come on tell me what should be the investigation of choice the investigation of choice is a ct angiography ct but doppler is not the investigation of choice for arterial system it is the ct angio which is actually going to establish the peripheral arterial disease doppler study is always considered the first line doppler is always the first line investigation for evaluation of any vascular pathology but if you talk about how to document it how to see the extent of condition you will have to go for ct angio but because on ct angio we want to see following important things what are the first thing the first thing is it is associated with skip lesions do you know this is the worst thing that we can see in vascular system skip lesion and that is why bypass cannot be done because they are associated with skip lesions so skip lesion is point number 1 the second important point that you should be knowing is that it is associated with collateralization and what sign do you see so collateralization is seen and because of this you see an inverted inverted tree inverted tree trunk one is inverted tree trunk appearance yes you can get to see spider leg appearance spider leg appearance all these things are to be seen remember when we talk about management the only 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 management that you have the treatment of choice answer is amputation why amputation is the treatment of choice there is no other option bypass cannot be done for these patients bypass is actually not meant for these patients however however first line therapy if you talk about the first line the first line management answer is you have to start with low dose ecosprin low dose ecosprin you have to start with you have to start with low dose ecosprin yes what else along with that silostazole silostazole this is what is and advise the patient to stop smoking if the patient if the patient is not if the patient is not following this you will definitely sir why are smokers developing tau try to understand bachche smokers are smokers are affected with tau why smokers are affected with tau they could try to understand what is tau tau is a vasculitis and you know who has asked yeah nitin nitin this is for you try to understand whenever you are smoking there is a very important component which is uh, which is uh, which is which comes out of smoke that is mmp can you tell me can anyone tell me what is mmp matrix metalloproteinase have you heard of this matrix metalloproteinase and this matrix metalloproteinase is the reason behind all the injuries yeah so try to understand this matrix metalloproteinase is going to cause intimal damage this is going to cause intimal damage and why intimal damage happens because of the intense inflammation are you getting nitin because of the intense inflammation there is intimal damage and because of this intimal damage there is platelet aggregation there is platelet aggregation and because of this platelet aggregation yes 
now now the things are going to compound and the lumen is going to get obliterated yes or no so because of this the lumen is going to get there is obliteration because of this there is obliteration obliteration of the lumen and therefore and therefore decrease in the blood flow are you getting this point or no that is why this is actually involving the small or the medium size vessels and nerves first so this is the reason of this let us let us go back to this let us go back to this and let us do one more question come on give tell me about this question tell me about this question is it clear nitin yeah did you get it beta yes Ar, yeah 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 of course of course only few but not all but definitely smoke is the reason behind this every smoker more or less will have this problem every smoker will have this problem because the vascular damage is going to happen volvulus gastric volvulus okay the following is the barium following is the barium meal uh, image for a patient with intermittent chest pain dysphagia and regurgitation dekho kush 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 i will tell you why it is not a volvulus why it is not a volvulus try to understand try to understand yes i will explain it to you but see if you see can you trace everything the things are like this yeah things are like this but see had it been volvulus yes if you see this is the lesser curvature this is the greater curvature the integrity of lesser and greater curvature both is maintained are you getting this or no had it been volvulus why it is not a volvulus first i will explain it to you if it was volvulus the type of volvulus which is generally common which is generally common is a what is a organoaxial we have two types we have organoaxial and a mesenteroaxial so greater curvature will be on the lesser curvature the pylorus the pylorus will be overlying the cardia yes or no this is what is the difference so in this there is no such thing so it is it can be anything but it cannot be a volvulus are you getting this point or no yes second thing in in gastric volvulus this regurgitation is absent in gastric volvulus why regurgitation is absent because the stomach has been twisted now when stomach has been twisted there is no question of regurgitation generally if you talk about that volvulus we have a classical borchardt stride have you heard of that borchardt stride yes when we talk about the borchardt stride borchardt stride what is so special about borchardt stride yes epigastric epigastric pain severe epigastric pain then you have intense retching yes or no you have intense sensation of retching what else do you have have along with that you have the coiling or inability of the rail tube inability to pass the rail tube inability to pass the rail tube bachche yahan to aisa kuch bhi nahi hai yes or no intense retching with little vomitus with little vomitus yes this is what is known as borchardt stride so bachche it could be anything but it could not be it cannot be a what yes a volvulus can't you appreciate this thing bachche what is this what will be present here this is the left crust or right crust this is the this is the right crust this is the left crust of the diaphragm this is the right crust of the diaphragm what are you something has gone up into the mediastinum yes so what is this students come on tell me what is this now haven't you heard of a hernia around a defect to esophagus so you will say this is para esophageal hernia yes or no a hernia parallel to esophagus esophagus isn't it or no para esophageal hernia very good kush it is hiatal hernia it is hiatal hernia are you getting this or no so this is hiatal hernia or para esophageal hernia i hope all these points are clear to everyone students yes yes now what type of para esophageal hernia or hiatal hernia is this can you tell me only the g junction is absolutely intact what is gone up answer is the part of the stomach has gone up yes or no since the part of the stomach has gone up 
what it is it's a type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 what it is very good excellent kush excellent this is a type 2 this is a type 2 or you can say this is a rolling hernia this is a rolling hernia yes rolling hernia nitin type 1 mein g junction is involved type 2 it is the fundus or the body including the fundus is involved type 3 both the both of them are involved so diagnosis we have the diagnosis that this is a case of para esophageal hernia what type it is type 2 it is let us talk about the management let us talk about the management when we talk about the management before that i will take four or five minutes and we will quickly revise a beautiful concept of para esophageal hernia also so when we talk about para esophageal hernia what are the types of para esophageal hernia we have type 1 which is known as sliding type what is the sliding type sliding type is herniation herniation of g junction yes herniation of g junction into media stenum into media stenum but this is the most common but it is not a true paraesophageal hernia try to understand this is what is defined as so can you see the g junction has migrated up the g junction the g junction has gone up this is type 1 or this is known as a sliding this is not a true hernia why first of all herniation this is not a true herniation because nothing is going up via uh, paraesophageal hernia means a hernia parallel to this now g junction is a part equally distributed between the stomach and the esophagus how can one's own part herniate into it should be you can say if it is going inside or telescoping inside then it would have been a case of what into susception here nothing is telescoping it is not herniating via abnormal defect it is the normal place from where the g junction is going in so esophagus how can a part of one's own organ herniate so remember it is not considered a true paraesophageal hernia it's not a true paraesophageal hernia yes let us move forward type 2 if you talk about type 2 what is type 2 students this is known as a rolling hernia rolling hernia and this is actually a true paraesophageal hernia this is a true paraesophageal hernia but it is least common it is least common so the hernia which you are seeing is the least common and what it what it is going the g junction is absolutely normal but what has gone up students try to understand the fundus of the stomach has gone up so this is the fundus which has gone up and this one is known as type 2 hernia but you know since g junction has gone up therefore if you talk about what is the classical presentation answer is reflux why because g junction is maintaining the tone and once the g junction is herniated the tone of the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter is lost and that is why you say that yes it is associated with reflux if you talk about this if you talk about this let us talk about type 2 hernia in type 2 hernia since the fundus fundus plus minus body of the stomach has gone up actually this will be associated with what presentation is obstruction so a presentation the classical presentation is obstruction the next is the third is so we have type 1 type 2 and type 3 what is type 2 it is a combination of type 3 a combination of type 1 and type 2 remember this is also known as mixed mixed so what it is going to do there is herniation of the there is herniation of the g junction also and the stomach also so there is a herniation of g junction also and the part of the stomach both have gone up yes so try to understand this is associated with this is associated with features of reflux also and features of obstruction also one more very 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 important point is that this might be associated with so this might be associated with gastric volvulus so which variety is associated with gastric volvulus answer is this is associated with gastric volvulus what type of gastric volvulus organoaxial organoaxial variety is associated with i want to ask you do you know what is type 4 hernia what is type 4 what is type 4 paraesophageal hernia type 4 if you talk about what is type 4 can you tell me what is type 4 yes type 4 is a paraesophageal hernia or a 
हाइटल हर्निया इट इज पैराइसोफेजल हर्निया एसोसिएटेड विद एसोसिएटेड विद हर्नियशन एसोसिएटेड विद हर्नियशन ऑफ विस्कस विस्कस अदर देन स्टमक सो स्टमक इज नॉट गोइंग जनरली द ट्रांसफर्स कोलॉन और जनरली द जनरली द जेजुनम इज गोइंग सो इफ यू सी दिस हर्निया टाइप फोर इट इज सिंपल एंड स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड वॉट इज दैट बच्चो दिस इज वॉट यस सो इन इन दिस गैप वॉट हैज गॉन अप दिस इज द दिस इज द बावल दैट माई हैव गॉन अप दिस इज वॉट इज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ टाइप फोर हर्निया नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू आस्क यू मैन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन tell me what is the investigation of choice how do you make the diagnosis tell me how do you make the diagnosis come on tell me what is the investigation of choice you should also yes be equally involved work up work up yes work up the basic work up is students you must have heard of barium study yeah barium esophagogram or the barium study is the investigation of choice investigation of choice do you know that ct scan ct scan is not the investigation of choice you must have read it in bailey and love people keep on giving references ki this is what this is what try to understand ct is not the investigation of choice if you still don't believe if you still don't believe i will take you to a book i will take you to a book this is mango one of the best book one of the best book for you can say uh, for surgery git try to understand this imaging studies i will i will i will increase the size of this column for you i'll increase the size of this column for you yes let us try to read this yeah chest x rays chest x rays whether chest x just wait yeah yeah chest x rays whether obtained entirely or entire entirely unrelated reasons or not can give you the diagnosis of peh so do you know even chest x rays can give you the diagnosis of peh kaise 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 bache try to understand this is a very 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 important concept that on chest x ray if you see on chest x ray if you see a retro a retro cardiac air fluid levels a retro cardiac air fluid levels it indicates that there is something a viscous behind that yes and this is actually a paraesophageal hernia because esophagus is in the posterior mediastinum and therefore any herniated content will be in that part only the second is coiling of the nasogastric tube above the diaphragm is another classical finding are you getting this so i'm giving this reference from mango which is considered to be the best even the new edition of mango has surpassed shackleford take my words surgeons prefer to read this more interestingly again right to the upper gi barium solo esophagogram is an essential part of the work up of these patients often gives the most accurate information regarding the hernia's anatomy its position as well as the location of g junction it can also offer some functional information regarding esophageal peristalsis also and reflux just read this line ct scan is not typically used in work up of peh its frequent use in patients work up for other reasons often leads to diagnosis of peh are you getting this point this is very 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 important thing very important thing so this is what yeah ct is a good modality to differentiate other hernias or diaphragm like if you are suspecting like someone has asked na sir how to differentiate between this hernia and a diaphragmatic hernia so yes if you want to differentiate the morgagni or bogdelex yes or if you want to evaluate the contents in type 4 hernia that is what is yeah let us move forward hmm? yes let us let us see of course you can say the differential diagnosis is a type for type 4 hernia is a diaphragmatic hernia so ct is done whenever you have a suspicion when you have a suspicion of diaphragmatic hernias when you have a suspicion of a diaphragmatic hernias which is actually to the defect in the diaphragm not why the hiatus hiatus is a natural defect i not call it again 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 do you think there is any importance of endoscopy anyone can anyone tell me generally i discuss this point for ss students do you think there is any importance of endoscopy let me tell you let me tell you this is specially for super speciality students bachche what is the concept of barium you give the barium 
to swallow and then the patient takes it and then the barium goes down try to understand majority of the patients majority of the patients who have a barium swallow esophagogram done for the sliding hernia try to understand the moment barium goes down the moment barium goes down the peristalsis will be started or no tell me the peristalsis will be started and this active peristalsis will push the g junction down back into the stomach or into the intra abdominal portion so many a times the diagnosis of the diagnosis of sliding hernia is missed on barium esophagogram are you getting or no so for suspected sliding hernias where barium study is normal you go for upper gi endoscopy with retroflexion view what is this retroflexion view have you ever seen this retroflexion view retroflexion view or you can say we often say in our layman's language j maneuver we say a j maneuver you must have seen those big big uh, you can say wheels na wheels the smaller one is for fine adjustment left and right and the bigger one is for anterior and the posterior folding of the endoscope so on endoscopy when your endoscope has gone when your endoscope has gone and when you do a j maneuver your endoscopic cable will twist like this and now you will be seeing the roof and this is actually going to differentiate and tell you a sliding hernia have you ever seen a sliding hernia i will show you a case of sliding hernia also very 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 decent case of sliding hernia just a minute just a minute yeah 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 okay i will show you a case of sliding hernia endoscopy i had that image also on endoscopy yeah try to see this can you see this this is what is a sliding hernia this is a normal stomach this is a normal stomach how are you try to make an orientation of this try to make an orientation of this dekho isko dekho kaise hai the endoscope has gone like this and endoscope has been twisted and that is why you are see, able to see that cable of endoscope this is the this is the opening of the g junction yes or no this is the gastric flap we are appreciating the gastric flap now if you see in this case in this case what is what are you seeing what are you seeing you are seeing the gastric rugal folds going right up in the esophagus and this is how you prove so try to understand there is a very 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 important role of endoscopy in case of sliding hernia because sliding hernias may be missed on the conventional barium and you might give a false negative reporting for them and that is why endoscopy with retroflexion view is very 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 important let us go back i just got carried away and i we discussed a lot of things yeah this is a very easy question tell me about this also yes very easy question identify the lesion identify the lesion and the grade let me give you a small history if you want i can give you a history if you want a history i can give you the history the history is long standing long standing long standing bed ridden or you can say long standing history history of uh you can say immobilization the patient immobilization the patient has a long standing history of immobilization with ulceration over the sacrum or you can say ulceration over the ischium yes or no so tell me what it is first of all give me the diagnosis what are we seeing what are we seeing very good nitin your answer is absolutely right yes very good jyoti very good it is a case of decubitus ulcer this is a case of decubitus ulcer very good awesome awesome now what is decubitus ulcer what grade it is you have to understand if it is only inflammation if only inflammation that is bruise yeah if there is only bruising that is redness that is grade 1 yes or no then if you have partial thickness injury yes if you have partial thickness injury partial thickness ulceration that is grade 2 if you have full thickness injury that is grade 3 and if you have grade 3 plus invasion or you can say erosion into deeper structures erosion into deeper structures what is that known as so erosion into deeper deeper structures yes that is what is known as grade 4 grade 4 are you getting this or no so if you see this image 
even the bony cortex even the bony cortex has been eroded there is erosion of the bony cortex the muscle it has gone right up to the level of muscle so this crater is actually reflecting you a what a type 4 decubitus ulcer i'll ask one more question in context with this you have to tell me let us discuss that also what is that tell me just tell me one very important question very 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 important question tell me the order or you can say the most common site for pressure ulcer or most common site for decubitus ulcer tell me the most common site for decubitus ulcer come on students rapid fire your yeah, fastest finger first most common site for decubitus ulcer the answer is the answer is always remember i remember it like i i always remember a mnemonic that it's he man yes or no it's he man i have my own mnemonic it's he man what is this what is this mnemonic all about the mnemonic is i for ischium this is ischium greater than yes greater trochanter greater trochanter yes greater trochanter greater than sacrum sacrum greater than heel yes greater than yes malleolus greater than malleolus and when we talk about malleolus it is medial more than what lateral and then you have occiput occiput again two three more important questions which you can get in context with decubitus ulcer बच्चे वाई डेक्यूबिटस अल्सर अकर्स आंसर इज देखो वेन एवर यू हैव दिस इज द स्किन एंड हेयर यू आर हैविंग द कैपिलरी इन ऑर्डर टू कीप द कैपिलरी डिस्टेंडेड येस देर इज अ प्रेशर विच इज नोन एज कॉप वॉट इज कॉप दिस इज डिफाइंड एज कैपिलरी ऑक्लूजन प्रेशर दिस इज डिफाइंड एज कैपिलरी ऑक्लूजन प्रेशर वॉट इज सो इम्पॉर्टेंट अबाउट दिस कैपिलरी ऑक्लूजन प्रेशर a normal capillary occlusion pressure is of 30 32 mm hg this is the pressure students try to understand this is the pressure which is required to compress the lumen of a capillary so if you want to compress the lumen of the capillary you have to do this and remember whenever there is p external there is p external the pressure actually doesn't reach the capillaries in that same magnitude the answer for that is the fat because there is a layer of fat you can say this fat is going to act like a shock absorber now what happens during chronic immobilization during during chronic immobilization the first thing that happens is what yes atrophy of fat so there is loss of fat so there is atrophy of fat and because of this all the pressure that you are seeing all the pressure that you are seeing is directly imparted to the capillary so if the capillary occlusion pressure if the p external is more than capillary occlusion pressure there will be what ischemia necrosis and once there is ischemia and necrosis ulceration will occur this is the reason behind this if you talk about the treatment in nutshell the treatment is debridement if there is a ulcer you have to do debridement not only debridement you have to start with antibiotics remember along with that you might use plus minus negative pressure dressing what is this negative pressure dressing all about can you tell me can anyone tell me what is it also known as negative pressure dressing come on come on come on something with vacuum what is that vacuum assisted closure vacuum assisted closure this is what is the concept of vacuum assisted closure two questions on vacuum assisted closures first of all what is the utility since it is a vacuum it is going to suction all the pus necrotic debris which is collecting and thus it is not allowing the bacterial proliferation do you know more and more bacteria present in the pus they are going to consume the oxygen and thus making the site available for lesser oxygen and thus the healing is impaired the second important thing is that it is going to approximate the healing part very soon so what is the pressure required tell me what is the pressure required yeah that is how it reduces edema na so what is the pressure pressure uh, pressure generated answer is minus 125 to minus 150 mmhg minus 
25 to minus 150 along with that you have to do weight offloading because students if you don't do weight offloading the patient will not be relieved and therefore you need air or you can say water mattress air or water mattress let us quickly move forward let us quickly move forward next is yeah let us discuss this question a 42 year this is like mcq yeah? a b c d a b c d all achha, 42 year old chronic smoker 42 year old chronic smoker presents to you with a white fibrotic patch over the lateral part of the tongue yes all except are true come on all except are true for this condition tell me all except are true for this condition come on a b c d this is a very simple question and with this question, we were going to revise one very important topic that is oral cancers. Very good, Nitin. Very, 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 very good. Very good. Answer is, sir, this is a white fibrotic patch. This is a white fibrotic patch. White fibrotic patch. And if it is a white fibrotic patch, yes, there are two important things that you should be thinking on. Either it is a case of mucoplakia, mucoplakia, which is the first and the most important, important differential diagnosis. The second is, it could be chronic submucosal fibrosis, chronic submucosal fibrosis. So it could be chronic submucosal fibrosis, it could be a case of leukoplakia. Yes, it could be case of candidiasis also, the other differential diagnosis, it could be candidiasis, candidiasis or lichen planus also or it could be a lichen planus, quite unlikely but it could be, it could be. Leukoplakia is the most important, most important diagnosis. Now forget about everything. Let us take them as a differential diagnosis. Is this a possibility? Of course, yes. Now, if we are taking it to be leukoplakia, try to understand leukoplakia is associated with parakeratosis and not deskeratosis. And hence, the answer for this is, this is absolutely wrong. Because nowhere do we have a suspicion of erythroplakia. Had it been a red velvety inflamed uh, patch, we would have taken even erythroplakia as the diagnosis and then we would have even marked A as the right answer but since it is a leukoplakia the correct answer for them is that yes it is not associated with dyskeratosis. Speckled variety is the most pre-malignant of all. Speckled variety is the most pre-malignant of all. Absolutely right if you talk about the leukoplakia. Wide local excision or radiotherapy do you know radiation is since it is a background of squamous cell cancer it's extremely radio sensitive let us talk of something about oral cancer also with this let us discuss something about oral cancer which is again a very 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 important topic for discussion oral cancers when we talk about oral cancer the first is most common type most common type answer is squamous cell cancer the second question is most common site answer is tongue answer is tongue what tongue lateral two-third of the tongue remember this is the most common site overall and this is also the most common site in west but in india what is the answer india mein hum khate kamla pasan yes or no or zuma kesari kids whatever it is no whatever you know dane dane me dam vimal Chani Khani, yes, Mili Jalaile, whatever thing. Yes, so in India, it is the buccal cavity. It is the buccal cavity. Yes, it is the buccal cavity that is the most common in India. Do you know overall in word it is ranking the sixth or the seventh most in India? In fact, it is the most common, the most common one. Most common malignancy in India is the oral malignancy. Let us see. And that is why you get a lot of questions, lot of questions on this. Let us talk about the pre-malignant lesion. Let's say last 2-3 sessions you always had questions on this. So let us talk about this concept of pre-malignant lesion. 
let us talk about the concept of pre malignant lesion when we talk about this pre malignant lesion the first thing that you should be knowing is the first thing that you should be knowing is we have leukoplakia what is lkp this is leukoplakia we have erythroplakia leukoplakia two points on leukoplakia it is a white fibrotic patch it's a white fibrotic patch point number 1 the second important point is it is the most common pre malignant lesion the third important point is on hpe on hpe you get to see a para keratosis you get to see a para keratosis if you talk about the types of leukoplakia remember it could be a nodular leukoplakia nodular leukoplakia it could be a diffuse type of leukoplakia or it could be so we have nodular type we had diffuse type or it could be a speckled amongst them amongst the leukoplakia speckled is the most malignant or you can say most pre malignant leukoplakia the next that you should be knowing is erythroplakia i'm not going to discuss the complete chapter but i'm going to discuss some important things when you talk about erythroplakia erythroplakia this is this is parakeratosis yeah of course there is exuberant uh, proliferation of these keratinized cells and that is why you have that parakeratosis proliferation it is pleomorphism without atypia yeah let us let us try let us start so erythroplakia erythroplakia is okay so try to understand erythroplakia is the most pre malignant lesion it's the most pre malignant lesion 30 times most why on hpe you get to see dyskeratosis 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 next is next is the third that we have is a chronic submucosal fibrosis chronic submucosal fibrosis students when we talk about chronic submucosal fibrosis this is associated with this is associated with exposure to irritants so exposure to irritants and these irritants will actually yes these irritants will actually damage the damage the lumen or, or you can say damage the oral mucosa there will be healing again you ex expose it again damage healing damage healing so the cycle will ultimately convert into a dysplastic cycle because of this there is a bamboo like stiffened tongue and what is that known as ankyloglossia ankyloglossia yes all those smoking spices ill fitting dentures pan masala these are all associated with chronic submucosal fibrosis so ankyloglossia is one thing and then you get to see trismus then you get to see trismus students very quickly i will discuss two three important things if you talk about the management of pre malignant lesions management of pre malignant lesion it is very simple and straight forward answer is excision answer is excision and not only this excision along with this we have other options also what are the other options also answer is radiotherapy it could be used by radiotherapy we could we can do a radiotherapy also in contrast to the management of pre malignant lesion if you are dealing with a cancer the management is a bit different if it is a cancer the management is you need to do a wide local excision with 0.1 uh, sorry with 1 to 2 cm margin at least 1 cm margin is required along with this compulsory for every patient you do a supra homo hyoid neck dissection s o h n d what are the lymph nodes that you remove in this supra homo hyoid neck dissection can you tell me there is removal of level 1 removal of level 1 level 2 level 3 is that clear or no along with that plus minus plus minus you have to go for radiotherapy plus minus you have to go for chemotherapy so radiotherapy and chemotherapy when you talk about radiotherapy 60 grays in 6 weeks 60 grays in 6 weeks if you talk about chemotherapy we go for cisplatin 5 fluorouracil remember this is only indicated for advanced cancer so chemotherapy chemotherapy is only for 
advanced cancer yes for advanced cancer otherwise we don't go for when we talk about radiotherapy what are the classical indications for radiotherapy each and everything has been asked answer is t3 and above all the tumors with t3 and above status depth of invasion more than depth of invasion more than 4 mm extra nodal extension e and e yes recurrence recurrence so local recurrence what else what else students if the lymph nodes are positive of course you have to go for what else are the indication answer is if the tumor free margin if the tumor free margin is less than is less than one centimeter students if it is less than one centimeter krishnan uh, yes balakrishnan try to understand it is seen that there is a high risk of it's a high risk of occult spread if the tumor free margin is less than so we are very strict if the tumor free margin is found to be less than one we prefer to go for radiation of the neck is that clear so let us quickly achha, one more important fact what is the most important prognostic factor let us see this most important prognostic factor answer is lymph node status again best prognosis best prognosis this is associated with what ca hard palate ca hard palate is associated with best prognosis worst prognosis which is associated with worst prognosis again that you know remember now whenever you go for mo movies yeah, there is a character name as Mukesh Harare, hai na? Dekha hai na? Mukesh Harare. Yeah, that patient suffering from cancer. The worst prognosis is with the buccal cancer. So, in India, mein hi sabse cancers hote hai, buccal cancers. Let us quickly move to the next question. I hope this is clear to everyone. Yes. Sure, 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 sure. Chal. Tell me this question also. Tell me this question. It's a very easy question, na? Very, 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 very easy question. Tell me. Very good, very good, very good, Jyoti. It's a classical profile of echalasia. This is a classical profile of echalasia. What sign are you seeing here? That, that this is classical of what bird beak sign? Yes or no? This is a classical bird beak sign. This is a classical bird beak sign. No, this is not rat tail. This is bird beak. Bird beak. Rat tail is not Rat tail. Rat tail is associated. That's a different. It's it's associated with malignancy of course you can say it to be a rat tail but rat tail is more consistent with malignancy there you are having a lot of changes but say how do you diagnose this as echalasia i made it very easy but i will discuss two three important things here when you talk about echalasia yes a patient presenting to you with dysphagia chest pain and regurgitation but say first of all try to understand this complaint of chest pain Yes, is seldom seen in ecclesia. But let us take it. Let us take it. Try to understand. Try to understand. Chest pain ecclesia mein nahi hoti. Then third is the age. So 35 year old female presenting to you with the concept of dysphagia and regurgitation with the following barium. This is consistent of ecclesia. I agree. Totally agree. Now what do you think? How do you diagnose ecclesia? Is it barium that can diagnose? Barium is essential part of esophageal pathologies, but it is not the diagnostic tool. Let me tell you, there are many teachers, many people who teach this thing that a classical triad of dysphagia, a classical triad of dysphagia, regurgitation, regurgitation and weight loss, dysphagia, regurgitation and weight loss. This is what is known as echalasia. This is absolutely bullshit. Gone are the days. But this will be the classical profile even for Ecclesia. If you see, Ecclesia may be a yoga. CA may be a yoga. Yes. GERD may be a yoga. Kiss me nahi yoga. Batona. Yes. Submit to a yoga profile. So please try to understand Ecclesia is no more a clinical, you can say clinical feature based diagnosis. 
try to understand the only way of diagnosing achalasia is a manometry it's a manometric diagnosis so let us try to understand a beautiful small 5 minute concept of achalasia many of you must have heard from me and if you have not heard today is the time to make these concepts try to understand achalasia first of all achalasia is a greek word which means failure to relax it means failure to relax students i'll make this concept very easy now if you want the esophagus to relax what are the forces which help in relaxation relaxation of the esophagus relaxation of the esophagus is helped with the intrinsic neuronal network one is the meissner's one is the meissner's plexus one is the meissner's plexus and the second one is the myantric plexus so we have meissner's plexus as well as the myantric plexus the second factor which is helping in relaxation answer is the relaxation is also helped with the nitrous oxide synthetase nitrous oxide nitrous oxide synthetase enzyme do you know apart from this apart from this what else you have to remember what is going to constrict the lumen yes who is going to compress the lumen yes so constriction the constriction of the lumen the constriction of the lumen this is with the help of acetylcholine now if you know i know we know everyone knows what happens in achalasia in achalasia there is progressive progressive loss of there is progressive loss of the meissner's the myantric plexus is that clear or no so one factor of relaxation one factor one pillar that was helping in relaxation gone yes or no this is progressive and that is why dysphagia is also progressive the second thing is the friend was saying no 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 sir don't worry don't worry if myantric and meissner plexus is not there the nitrous oxide synthetase is present do you know achalasia is associated with a non functional nitric oxide synthetase non functional nitric oxide synthetase and that is the reason why the les lower esophageal sphincter has the maximum concentration of the acetylcholine receptors and therefore there is unopposed action of the acetylcholine and unnecessarily increase tension so therefore there is unopposed acetylcholine action is that clear no acetylcholine action if you don't believe i always say na use your surgical sense if you have taken my class i always insist on this point that use your surgical skill surgical sense and if you see acetylcholine and can you see unopposed action of acetylcholine this leads to achalasia this leads to achalasia so what is happening here what what has what is happening at at lower esophageal sphincter you get to see two things what is that hypertensive les hypertensive les and the second is the second is you get to see okay there are lot of things where the tension is more but it should at least relax the second thing is it fails to relax why it fails to relax because the myantric and meissner's and nitric oxide synthetase is not working don't worry what else happens because of the un interrupted or you can say unopposed acetylcholine action the entire esophagus is under this effect of acetylcholine and therefore there is constriction of the lumen and because of this constriction of the lumen you will have two three changes what is that first of all low amplitude waves low amplitude waves so students you get to see low amplitude waves point number 1 the second important point is the entire esophagus might be under the pressure so there is pressurization there is pressurization of esophagus so there is pressurization of esophagus low amplitude wave forms and there is loss of peristalsis also do you know these points yes Point one, point two, point three, point four, point five. One plus two plus three plus four plus five. They are all the important parameters establishing the diagnosis of achalasia on manometry. So try to understand whatever you have studied here. This is the manometric criteria for achalasia. This is the manometric criteria for achalasia. 
are these points clear to you people or no this is very 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 important today merely by seeing the ecclesia like features you cannot say this is ecclesia again you should know that on barium on barium you get to see the typical appearance of what yes you get to see that rat tail appearance you get to see that uh, bird beak appearance bird beak appearance you get to see that pencil tip appearance blah 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 so let us move forward let us move forward ecclesia if you talk about i am going to discuss with you one more concept you must have heard in last year's uh, neat there was a question on chicago's classification chicago's classification yes or no chicago's classification i'm going to describe this chicago's classification For only one time i will describe and i bet that after my class you will never forget this chicago i'm not going to give mnemonics i'm not going to give mnemonics i'm just going to explain you everything but say first of all what happens what happens in ecclesia try to understand answer is hypertensive lower esophageal sphincter hypertensive lower esophageal sphincter a peristalsis a peristalsis a peristalsis and therefore there is failure to relax so failure to relax yes so 1 2 and 3 this is grade 1 ecclesia what is grade 1 ecclesia this is the classic ecclesia the classic type of ecclesia and 1 plus 2 plus 3 this is what is so a peristalsis hypertensive hles and failure to relax failure to relax bachche dekho try to understand sushil sushil i'll answer your question sushil kitna acha naam hai what a beautiful name the changes are progressive if you see the changes are progressive and not in day one you leave you, there is loss of mitric and mesner's plexus so the defect starts at the level of lower esophageal sphincter and therefore in the early stages when you do when you do this ecclesia ecclesial barium esophagogram there is a smooth gradual tapering towards the end and that is why you get to see this rat uh, this is bird beak appearance now as the lesion progresses so in the early stages in the early stages this is sink as the lesion progresses so this is progressive over the time this column will become this column will become more and more narrow as the time passes bachche sushil sushil samajh mein aaya ki nahi sushil 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 beta beta sushil now can you see that rat tail appearance dekho i am not going i don't matlab teach all these things because i don't hate i don't like barium but yes and barium is all about fantasies yes or no fantasies medical students are the fantasy kisi ki achhi nahi hoti hai anything we can fantasize about so now you can see is that clear so in the late stages you get to see the typical rat tail okay anyways isko samjho shushil try to understand grade 1 loss of loss of uh, you can say a peristalsis loss of peristalsis hypertensive les plus failure to relax this is grade 1 what is grade 2 now in grade 2 what happens grade 2 is defined as grade 1 plus pressurization of esophagus pressurization of esophagus so we say pan esophageal increase in pressure ab dekho kya hota hai this is a condition when the entire esophagus yes has been pressurized because of this increase pan esophageal pressure and of course of course there is no there is nothing to relax so 1 plus 2 plus 3 along with that if there is pressurization of esophagus also so 1 plus 2 plus 3 and along with that there is pressurization pressurization of esophagus that is known as grade 2 the last is grade 3 which is also known as vigorous ecclesia try to understand this grade 3 also when we talk about grade 3 this is known as vigorous ecclesia vigorous ecclesia yeah or this is also known as spastic ecclesia do you know that esophagus also gets irritated esophagus kare tumhari aisi tai si yaar i am trying from last 15 20 years you're not helping me you're not helping me and the only way i'm i'm not able to pass the food because my peristaltic waves are low amplitude and that is why my peristaltic amplitude is the reason behind my dysphagia and therefore esophagus exerts a high amplitude wave form 
but do you know the peristalsis is still the simultaneous mirrored contractions and that is why it is non progressive so try to understand this is defined as this is defined as hypertensive les hypertensive les with high amplitude with you can say with high amplitude with high amplitude yes simultaneous mirrored contractions simultaneous mirrored contractions this is what is known as spastic or vigorous ecclesia dekho kya hota hai in order for a esophagus to work properly but the wall the wall should be complementing each other can you see if there is elevation here there is contraction here if there is contraction here there is elevation here so if i put a ball here let me see if i put a ball here the ball can easily move or no because two balls are progressive but if you see what type of peristalsis happens here this is the kind of peristaltic contraction now if i draw a mirrored if i draw a mirror in between yes if i draw a line in between can you see both the walls are exactly the mirror images yes or no so let me draw a bolus of food how will this bolus of food cross down because either it is contracting or it is relaxing on both the walls that is why the fault is not with the contraction the fault is with the attitude of contraction also it should have been simultaneous mirrored contraction are always pathological and non progressive you know the treatment yes what is the treatment that we have the treatment of if you talk about the treatment of ecclesia they could try to understand ultimately we have lot of options yes the first line the first line is drugs which is not useful we have drugs we have calcium channel blockers we have uh, phosphodiesterase inhibitors we have nitrates amongst them nitrates nitrates are associated with the best you can say results but the problem is that there is what there is actually the concept of tachyphylaxis tachyphylaxis let us try to understand one very important thing therefore as the time passes this is only a time bind procedure as it fails you go for endoscopic interventions when you talk about endoscopic interventions endoscopic interventions what is what are the endoscopic intervention that we do we have two classical endoscopic interventions either we go for a balloon balloon yes dilatation balloon dilatation by doing a balloon dilatation you are actually you are actually going to introduce what the cracks in the muscle so if you dilate a balloon try to understand this balloon dilatation yeah or you can say injection botulinum injection botulinum by doing this balloon dilatation by doing this balloon dilatation students what will happen you are going to crack the muscles you are cracking the muscles and you are going to reduce the tone you are going to reduce the tone is that clear no so injection botulinum or balloon dilatation they are the first line endoscopic interventions but the biggest drawback the biggest drawback is can you tell me the biggest drawback of balloon balloon dilatation answer is perforation perforation yes 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 nowadays you have one more intervention endoscopic that is poem so we have poem poem what is this poem per oral endoscopic myotomy per oral endoscopic myotomy there are lot of endoscopic third space surgeries per oral endoscopic myotomy per oral endoscopic myotomy but see the myotomy yeah this is this is a surgery this is a surgery where you if you see let us see this to be the let us see this to be the esophageal muscle with the endoscope what you do you with the endoscope you actually enter in between the muscle and the submucosa muscle and the submucosa and what you do then you can introduce the crack then you can cut it cut it cut it this is what is the endoscopic replica of heller's myotomy so what you do via endoscope you go into this third space so this is a third space third space endoscopy so what is the third space first space is the intraluminal cavity the second space is the peritoneal cavity the third space is the cavity in between the submucosa and the muscle is that clear so not a natural cavity nowadays we are increasing the utility we have poem we have poem z 
poem G is for Zenkert's diverticulum. We have prim, prim, P R E M. This is per rectal endoscopic myotomy. That is for that is for Hirschsprung's disease. We have poem G, which is a treatment for gastroparesis. So lot of advancement in the third space endoscopy. Now we have the drawback of this. Since you are going, you go 10 centimeters above the G junction. You go 10 centimeters above G junction. Yes, and you go one to two centimeters below the G junction. The problem is there is no endoscopic fundoplication technique available and that is why reflux is a big drawback. Even that has been now, even that has been now, uh, that has been now, uh, we have a solution for that because now we have ESOFIX that is known as TIF, transoral incisionless fundoplication where actually you can where actually you can have that uh, you can say the endoscopic plication i will discuss it in another setting now remember then we have if you talk about surgery which is considered to be the treatment of choice the surgery of choice is heller's myotomy so we have a modified heller's myotomy we have modified heller's myotomy and the another we have is esophagectomy we have esophagectomy which is the preferred Esophagectomy or Heller's myotomy. This is the treatment of choice. By doing this, what are you doing? That what are you? What are? What is your intention? You divide the entire longitudinal and the circular muscle six to seven centimeter, six to seven centimeter above the G junction, two to three centimeter below the G junction. The aim is the aim is to decrease the tone of LES. Can anyone tell me what is ideal? What is ideal Heller's myotomy? Answer is post surgery, post surgery reduction in tone of LES, reduction in tone of LES by at least or more than 10 mm Hg. Since you are decreasing the tone, you always have a risk of reflux. Therefore, fundoplication. Remember, for these patients, you generally prefer to do a partial fundoplication, door or toupee. So, fundoplication, partial fundoplication is must. In order to prevent the reflux you can do a floppy you can do a door you can do a toupee anything so this is what is uh, Heller's myotomy and it's and it's uh, you can say ecclesia and it's complete management so I hope you enjoyed every day around 5 o'clock we will be having the session and yes do join an Academy use the code dr. Dixit dr. Dixit you can use the code surgery live any code you can use yes and subscribe to my all special sessions free of course you can buy the subscription plus subscription there are a lot of schemes going on you can avail the benefits do give your feedbacks do share the links with your friends and yes if you have still not joined my telegram group uh, on app i am i am planning i am planning to plan uh, i am in the mood to plan a class around maybe 9 30 or 10 i will just notify it on the telegram group and the telegram group the telegram id is surgery dada you can start this you can join me on this link of telegram okay i hope you people enjoyed every day for next six seven days we'll be having this one hour session right at five o'clock and five to six okay till then